So the first thing we need to do in order to set up Pathfinder Office on a licensed server is to, of course, download the software. So we're here at Trimble.com. You need to go over to Support and Training and then Support A through Z. This brings you to the alphabetized list of every product known to Trimble. And then you're going to go down to G for GPS Pathfinder Office. And where are we here? A little bit further down. Okay. And all the downloads on Trimble's website are organized in the same fashion. Um, so go down to Downloads, which is on the Technical Support tab. And note that some of these features don't work unless you have Internet Explorer 11 or Chrome or Firefox. So make sure you got a new browser. So I'm going to go to Downloads. And here's the software. As of this recording, we've got 5.60 as the newest software. So you always want to get the newest that you're eligible for and click here and it will start downloading alright so I have downloaded Pathfinder Office I've unzipped it and um, I've copied it to a network location here that can be easily shared between my client desktop here and my server so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into a remote desktop connection on my server so that you can see the process there so we'll do that here now you see here I've got the remote share that I place the the uh, download in. I'm going to open it up, and um, it's in Install and Mapping and GIS License Manager. So we want to run the setup for that first. Okay, we're going to go ahead and run the file. We do trust it, and we'll just let this go for a moment. So we're going to click Next here through the wizard. Um, agree to the uh, license agreement which of course we do read right and uh, you can print it out for later review so we'll just agree the, to those terms I'm gonna put in uh, my username and my company name okay and we're gonna install this application for all users and actually this is asking for the user so I'm gonna actually put administrator um, I am running this this uh, remote connection under an administrator. Um, normally, you do the complete. I'm going to show you what uh, what custom has to offer. It'll let you choose your destination folder. That's fine by me. I'm going to hit next there. Um, it's going to install all the programs. And let's see. So it's just confirming the settings here. That's good. And now it's going to go ahead and install the license manager software. Now this portion goes on the server and uh, this is what runs the check-in check-out process for all your client machines so you can have one license and let that sit on the server and have any number of clients uh, connect to it our installation has finished so we'll click the finish button now we want to open up the software itself and it's conveniently there at the bottom it also can be found in all programs Trimble and license manager Okay. So this is what the license manager software looks like. Okay, so you've got a few menus here, view, options. Okay, so here's where you're going to put in your IP address. Um, this is the IP address of my server, and the default port here is 56077. That's important. If we use the default, then we don't have to change it on the client machines. So if that port is available on your network, it certainly makes it easier to install, but there's a number of ranges that you can use. Um, we also have a restart service button that does restart the li license and G er, mapping and GIS license manager service, um, but we don't need to do that here. I do want to make note that once you get this installed, please do pull up the help file. This is the documentation that I email to my clients, and it is extremely helpful. There is a very important thing that we need to do. Um, we need to set up a registry edit. Let's see, configuring the license manager. It talks about here using an IP and port number. Um, gives you the valid range and, and invalid. So it supports 49152 through 65535. You can use anything in there. The default is 56077. Um, but here is the most important thing. We need to do a registry edit. So let's do this. We're going to go to run and type regedit. 
and let's move that down so we can see our instructions here okay so we're gonna go to local machine software Trimble TMGIS license manager so let's go H key local machine software Trimble TMG license manager if you don't see that registry yet it, your, your software is not properly installed so let's click on that there and we are going to add a new string value so let's go back in here we're gonna right click and go new string value Oops. let's edit that name let's rename it and it's gonna be called server address in uh, standard caps so let's rename that okay server address now note that my server has a static IP address that's very important you do not want this IP address to change or you're gonna be in here all the time so do not use DHCP use a static IP address so we've got the string value server address now we're gonna modify it and put in our IP address and port now I need to get that from here okay 192.168.200 and I'm just gonna copy this bit to the clipboard so let's go here let's hit cancel okay so we're gonna modify this and the value is 192.168.0 I think I said dot 200 colon and the IP port let's just double check that I'll put that in there and I probably let's see here oh it was wrong it's dot one so let's fix that so if you're not comfortable re editing the registry um, get an IT professional in your organization to take care of that for you and server address is modified okay so we've got that set okay so our registry edit is complete and now we're ready to add our installation code so let me go and grab that and we will get that entered so. alright so now I've got one license in the license manager I've already did that off camera I'm gonna go ahead and do one now so that you can see what that process is like um, kind of to simulate an organization that had more than one license in the server so you can have one or more it, it all works the same so you hit the plus button here to add one uh, we're going to paste in our installation code um, say that we want to activate over the internet now um, that works 99.9% .9 of the time okay it's contacting the server and it activates it okay we hit finish everything was successful and now we have two licenses available in there and so everything is good to go um, down here you'll see the users that are using the license once we get the clients configured so up to this point we've downloaded the software unzipped it and placed it on the server in a network share we've done our registry edit it and in installed the license manager now the next bit we were gonna go on to a client machine and load the software and so it can pull a license from the server successfully then after that we'll do a little bit of troubleshooting so stay with us we're going to select English as our language and click OK. You may notice my desktop background is a little bit different. I was having some problems um, trying to uh, log in as a standard user and I'm logging in as an administrator now. You may find the same. Okay, so we're uh, going to hit next. Um, again, you can print the license agreement so you can read it later or you can agree to it now. I'm going to go ahead and agree to it. I've already read it before type in my username and my company okay we'll go to next okay so this is very important if you do not do this correctly you're gonna have some problems so um, what you want to do is install Pathfinder Office using a floating license obtained from a license manager on the network go ahead and hit next okay server address uh, you can use UNC's but I prefer to actually just use the plain old IP address so that's 168. excuse me 192.168.1.200 was my IP address and then colon 56077 okay, you can actually leave that off if uh, it's a default port but I do like to put it on just as a best practice let's hit the test button and see if we can hit the server 
It's going to go across my network and try and find it. The license server cannot be found at the specified address. Please check the address and check with the administrator. So I don't think I let it through the firewall. So what we need to do is go to remote desktop and jump into the server and let it through the fire allow access through the firewall. Allow program through Windows firewall. I think is the uh, easiest way to do it. Okay, so we just need to go through allow another program. License manager, add, okay, and I'm going to actually allow it through the firewall for work networks as well, homework networks, but not public. Um, okay, hit OK there. Now the other thing we need to do on the server is uh, open up control panel, and uh, we're going to change user account control to never notify on the server, and then we're going to do the same on the client. So user accounts, manage user account control settings, and we're going to drop this down to never notify and hit OK. Okay, now we do need to restart the server to do that, but I'm not going to do that until the very end because remember we don't want the server to have a lot of downtime. We want to minimize the restarts that we have on our server. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to minimize and set the user account control on the client as well and control panel and user accounts user accounts again change user account control settings and never notify now if you don't know what user account control is all it is is a system that prevents unauthorized users from modifying system settings, installing programs, any number of things that would require an administrative account. By setting it to never notify, you are not granting access to these features. You are just minimizing the fact that it will show a notification that they need um, uh, elevated privileges and it's just going to automatically deny any changes. So um, just hit OK there. And now let's try and test it. Yeah, I'm going to restart the server. I'm also going to restart the service. So um, let's close all this stuff. Okay, let's go to options and service IP address. And we're going to restart the service. Oh, we need to select the IP address first. Okay, we'll restart the service. Let's see if that helps or. Maybe we might need to restart the entire server. Still again, okay. All right, I'm gonna go and restart my server. So when you do this, you need to inform your users that you're gonna be shutting things down so they can back out of files. I've only got one user logged in, that's myself, so I'm okay to do it. Uh, here, restart. All right, so we're going to test this connection. I actually lowered my firewall completely down temporarily, and it should now um, show a successful connection. Now, obviously, we don't operate in a normal IT environment with our firewall down. So the next thing I've got to do is find out why it's being blocked by my firewall. My theory is that the uh, port number 56077 is not being allowed as well as the software so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now alright as I had suspected it was a port that was not being allowed through the firewall I can show you if we test the connection it goes very quickly and finds it I'll show you on the server how to create an outbound rule and an inbound rule um, you go to Windows firewall with advanced security and you're gonna create a new rule uh, we're gonna allow a port and then it's TCP for Pathfinder Office. You punch in 56077 or whatever you used initially in that range. Um, go to next and allow the connection. Next, um, which networks does it apply? Your domain network, your private network, your public network. Um, and then hit next. Give it a name and, a, and an optional description and then hit finish. And then what you've got here is the port uh, rule that you created. It's in here somewhere. Anyway, so that fixed the problem. Okay, so we allowed that port through the network, through the firewall, and uh, and it works now. So we're going to jump back to our client, 
and um, notice I don't have the port number on there. I'm going to throw it on there and test it just to see, to make sure. I always like to use the port numbers. It's a good practice. Let's go back and test that connection. Works great. That's what we want. So go to next. Um, I also like to go with the custom installation to make sure what I'm getting. Um, Pathfinder Office Directory, that's fine. Um, it's going to install the main program, the high accuracy geoid grid files for the United States. Um, if you didn't want the geoid for other regions, you can uncheck that. Um, then the setup files, so we'll go ahead and hit next. And it's going to upgrade your coordinate system and zones, that's good. And this is your default project folder, that's where all your GPS projects are going to be. That's fine for me, it's in my documents and in my GNSS projects. Okay, um, you can have these things start every time you restart your computer project changer and connection manager. I really don't like to have these utilities start and make my uh, my start time fast or take longer. Um, so I'm not going to set those, but that's up to you. Um, go to next and next. All right, after the installation is complete, we get this message that says that there's been some changes in geoid model interpolation. Um, it just uh, yeah, read the release notes for more information. Okay, so we're going to tell it to check for program updates. So you'll just go to the website. Okay, good. No updates. We're good. So next, finish. Now the last thing to do is to open up the software and make sure it works. So we'll open up Pathfinder Office. Okay, it opened up. Now let's go to the help screen about Pathfinder Office. Awesome. It's licensed. It shows our server number. Um, everything is working. That's exactly what we want to see. Now let's look at our server. We'll go to the server and it shows our uh, license. Let's refresh. And zero are available on this license. We had another client using it, that license, and then the third guy wouldn't have a license and so he'd need to ask somebody to close the software. Once you close it, it automatically goes back into the license server and it's there for somebody else. So it's pretty cool. This is how to install Pathfinder Office in a nutshell. We, got, we went through um, how to set up the server so that it would have uh, everything that it needed, including that important registry edit. We uh, installed it on the client, and we also went through a little bit of troubleshooting. Remember, uh, user account control, set it to never notify on both server and client, and remember to allow it through your firewall. If you have further problems, uh, give me a call here at Monson Engineering, and, or send me an email, and we'll be happy to help you out. Um, thanks.